And I had to encounter a lot of warfare in the midst of me trying to, to, to birth it out, to really birth it out for real. Um, I had to go to the threshing floor many times and had some, some, I have to declare them to be awesome experiences, but they weren't, they weren't awesome in the terms of beautiful, but they were awesome in the term of victorious, victorious moments on the prayer floor. And the Lord began to birth this word out. And I have to, I have to, I have to be able tonight to really teach it because every time you say the word Jezebel, people get a whole big misunderstanding. Now I have to help you understand, so I'm coming in two, two forms this trip. I'm coming in the office of a prophet and a mother. So probably since the last time you, you've seen me, I used to just say, you know, there are people that I'm, that I'm training, but the Lord has confirmed to me many times over in prayer that I have, I have now been elevated to the ability and the status of a mother in Zion, a mother in the spirit. And so not only am I coming to just bring instructions, but I'm going to impart before I leave here. So you can't put the cart before the horse, okay? You got to do it in order. Or you'll get touched, but you won't be changed. And I keep telling y'all I'm getting older now, so I ain't got time to be touching people. You got to get changed. Amen, somebody. Bring me my glasses out of my purse. It says here that the Lord became angry in the book that... There's a chapter in there called The Seduction of Jezebel. And I have, to, I have to go with this. The reason why the Lord brings correction, many of you may have heard me say it on TV, but I'll say it again. The reason why the Lord brings correction and instruction, the reason why the Lord chastises us, he chastises us because page 126 says that Titus 1 and 1 says, Paul, a bondservant of God, an apostle of a special messenger of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to stimulate and promote the faith of God's chosen ones and to lead them on to accurate discernment and recognition of an acquaintance with the truth which belong to and harmonizes with and tends to godliness. So the reason why we are to be instructed as children and challenged as children so that we can be stimulated and promote it and so that our discernment can increase so that we're not looking at stuff calling it God when it's the devil so we may have accurate discernment what does accurate design discernment do it brings about a harmonizing Whew, that's powerful I love that it brings about a harmonizing which tends to godliness what does that mean? That means that everything that happens in my life, when I am properly corrected, when I get the right kind of whooping, then it stimulates my discernment to the point that I can look at that situation and I don't care how it redresses itself, I still recognize that spirit. Because when I got corrected, my discernment was increase to the point that I know the demon I don't care how it tries to camouflage itself and look different and so what that does is it harmonizes my spirit with the will of God Woo, I'm teaching already it, it harmonizes me with the will of God it's this the harmonization is the same thing as when you when you when you when you have a choir and um son just just lay your hands on the keys I don't want nothing I just want you to just lay your hand flat okay that that's a sound that is a sound of a person that, that, that does not and cannot, does not and cannot handle rebuke. That is the sound of a bastard child. But when you are corrected in the spirit, now give me a nice chord. It harmonizes, which means one key don't clash with the other. And it brings about a sweet sound in the spirit. Are you hearing that? And now, now, now what does harmonizing do? Harmonizing tends to
to my godliness. That means it babysits me. It keeps me from doing wrong. It watches over me. My discernment causes me to know what was right and what is wrong. Somebody say a rebuked and a corrected child. But see, something happens. Now watch this. Something happens, and, and, and just, 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 just follow me on this. Something, something happened when the word said that, and God became angry with Ahab because uh, people say that the Lord was angry with him because he married Jezebel. But the depth that I'm going to show you tonight is that evil do not start with an event. Evil starts with a legacy. Woo, okay, I'm going to have to work in here tonight. Get your pad and pencil out because we're going we to... We're going we to write some stuff. E evil don't start with, okay, let me just say this to you. Now, see, there's a difference between a person that makes, that makes a mistake in their walk with God and they, and they have an incident. And then they repent for that incident. But when you find people who are constantly having the same incident, God, I love you tonight. When you find people that every time God get them out of one thing, they back in something else. When you find people that cannot hold on to their righteousness and cannot hold on to their godly walk. That's not a person who is making a mistake. That is a person who needs to recognize that evil is their lineage. Which means they got to go back in their generation and find out why am I doing this thing over and over and over again. And so the church, the church, instead of us progressing, we're babysitting. Okay. I'm, 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 nobody going to talk to me too many times right here because, you know, we can't, we can't. And I, listen, I'm not talking about one or two. Because you got one or two people in the church that's really powerful and just, and just love God. And you can trust their spirit. But God is not, call, he doesn't call the church just one or two. If he, if he ever touched your life and brought you to the altar and saved you, you are a part of the body of Christ. So therefore, it is time for you to stop fumbling and bumbling and find out. Go to the root of the matter. We keep trying to treat the symptom. But God said, it's not the symptom. It's not the kiss. It's not the fornication. Well, it's deeper than that. So now we preaching on clothes and, and, and makeup and, you know, Jezebel is clothes and Jezebel is makeup. And Jezebel is, the, is, is honey, she the woman that's after the pastor. And that's been the whole deception of the body of Christ. Because we think Jezebel is one woman in the church. And so instead of us building the kingdom, we turn all of our attention to Sister Watermelon. Soon as church turned out, this, this is intercessors talking now. Did you see what she had on? Now, that was a demon. That was. Did you see how long she was in pastor's face? Honey, that's a hot mess right there. You know she, honey, we gonna pray on her. I'm going to help you with something. We're going to pray her out of our church. We're going to pray that God get rid of her. Okay. Okay, let's, 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 let's. We're going to pray to the Lord deliver the church from this sister. Okay. Well, then let's find out what made the Lord angry. Let's, let's look at this couple and let's look at them. Because I have some problems with, with, um, 
with the, with the description or the opinions of Ahab. Because people say all the time, Ahab was a jelly back. He just, honey, he let Jezebel come in there and just take over. He just, that's a whole lot of preachers got like Ahab, just letting their wives just, you know. And we done turned this thing into a, into a husband-wife thing. A first lady passed the battle. And so the Bible says, now watch this. Let's look at the history of the couple. Let's look at the history of the couple. We're going to find out tonight that Ahab and Jezebel was a divine connection. They belong together. Okay, let's go back and look at this. Let's go back and look at this. First thing I want to recognize is that Jeroboam, go to 1 Kings 12 and 8. And we right there. You already there, say amen. I just got to turn my Bible there. 1 Kings 12 and 8. Now, y'all stay with me. Stay with me now. Stay with me. We're going somewhere for real. For real. For real. For real. For real. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. The Lord split the kingdom, gave 10 tribes of the kingdom to Jeroboam, kept one of the tribes. Solomon had to maintain a tribe because God had to honor his word to David, that the legacy of the kingdom would stay in the hands of David's lineage because Christ had to come through that lineage. But a percentage of that kingdom was also divided to Rehoboam. Now, why does that make any sense to us today about Jeroboam? Because, watch this, watch this, this, I want you to see. Jeroboam, after having the kingdom of God, what did he do? He became, he got in competition. Now, now, now here is a man that's got 10 tribes, and Rehoboam got one tribe. <laughs> but the people that was with Rehoboam, they realized, according to the 12th chapter, they said, okay, wait a minute, Jeroboam, they over there and they clowning. Which one of us is going to reap the inheritance of David? Because we're looking for our spiritual inheritance. We've been promised that, that, that God has a covenant with us. So when Jeroboam heard that he had 10 tribes, Catherine, you know what he said? He got in competition and built two calves, two golden calves. And so what he said is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build something that's going to excite them. Because this was his words. If those people ever get into the presence of God, make it to Jerusalem, get back to the temple, I'm going to be in trouble. The scripture said, if they make it back to the altar of God, then God is going to catch a hold to their hearts. Woo! And when God gets a hold to a heart, it can be three people in your church but he'll use three people to take a nation okay I'm not hearing nobody to talk to me I'm not hearing y'all talk because I'm helping somebody right now I'm helping some ministries right now who looking cross town at somebody else that when well, they got a bigger church and we ain't hardly got nothing and they got this and they got that but you don't value what you really got because because they may have something bigger and they may have something better but it is the anointing that destroys the yoke okay I'm a I said I wasn't gonna strike out preaching like that and so you bypass your treasure trying to get calves like your neighbor well I'm talking to all of us tonight God then gave you a prayer ministry the power of God the precious the precious flow of the spirit have called you and chosen you to be an intercessor at 12 o'clock at night but you're trying to get up here and preach because oh she getting all the glory oh pastor always call her name oh she gets to stand up here with the mic but you know what you ignoring the part that God gave you
You know what? You know what? You know what? The reason, the reason why I just had to stop right there because, because in the midst of me teaching this, in the midst of me walking with this, the Lord began to challenge me also. Because see, we want to be way up the road and around the corner. And, 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 and the Lord said, you know what? Not, not only have I called you to do something, but you got to wait on my timing. And sometimes, let me just give this little prophetic word before I go back to teaching. Sometimes the Lord will allow obstacles to get in your way because you're moving in the wrong direction. Now, why do I bring up this story about Jeroboam? Because you know what? The Bible said that when he got ready to consult with the Lord, God sent him. Listen, it said God sent him to old to the older elders who had said who his father had counsel with and he said should we go do that they said no don't do that but the bible said he left the old counsel and the wisdom of god and went and found his friends that he grew up with and he asked them what should we do but what he didn't realize his friends is his age they don't have the wisdom to see up the road and around the corner they gave him bad counsel lord jesus lord jesus you got you got a destiny Woo! Let me step down here on you for a minute. God's got something locked up in your life. And it is on a time scale. And you letting some chump that's your age in the spirit. That they ain't been in church long as you have. Tell you what God is saying. No, you ain't been in God long enough to tell me what God is saying. You haven't been around long enough. Show me your stripes. Tell me your testimony. Tell me where you've been. Tell me how you know God. You can't lead me to a water if you've never had nothing to drink yourself. You can't help me build my ministry with nice fires and and all of the cosmetics that the church has to offer. And you're leaving out the main ingredients. You're leaving out my soul. Woo! I'm preaching hard right now. I'm preaching hard right now. Well, prophets, by the way, you know, I just love my church and I, and I just love the past. Let me tell you something. If you're under a leadership that can only give you the good and something in your belly does not jump to righteousness, then you're in the wrong place. Okay. Okay. Give me some more. Okay. Okay, let me, let me just, let me just, let me just back up. I'm going to show you something in a minute that's going to, that's going to really bless you. Because I'm going to show you that this is not my opinion. Let me show you the legacy here. You ready for it, brother? Ham. How many remember Ham. Raise your hand if you remember Ham. If you don't remember Ham, I got to tell you who Ham is. Yeah, okay. How many of y'all remember Ham? Okay, now let me lead you down the line here. Ham uncovered his father's nakedness in Genesis 9. Okay, you following? Y'all remember that? When, when Noah got drunk in the tent and his sons went in and the one son got his... Uh, covering and backed into the tent so that he wouldn't see his father's nakedness. The other one wanted to see his father's nakedness. And let me just say this to you. And there are some commentaries that suggest that he had a homosexual desire for his father. Because it wasn't that big of a deal to see your father naked. It's the way he looked up on him. Okay, now I'm going to show you something right there. Because what happened right there is, is the spirit of perversion was lurking. Now I'm going somewhere with this. Then Ham's oldest son, say Ham's oldest son, was Cush. Watch this. The pagans, pagans, meaning people outside the church, the pagans gave Cush a name. And they called Cush Bell. 
B-E-L. They called him Bell. Follow this. Bell meaning the confounder. Bell meaning he was known as the God of confusion. Now, somebody said, well, well then, who is, who is that? Well, who is, who is, uh, who is Cush? Who is Baal? Okay, he founded Babylon. You ain't got it yet, right? Right? Baal, B-E-L, or B-A-A-L, it suggests confusion is brewing somewhere. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to help you a little bit further because for some of y'all. Cush had a son named Nimrod. Nimrod, watch this, ensnared men with his words and incited them. Nimrod incited them to rebel, rebel, bail, rebel against God. Nimrod, watch this, Nimrod. His first quest, he was considered as a warrior. His first quest was Babel. Nimrod was the one who made the decision that we gonna be, oh God, we gonna build us a temple to God. And we gonna all get together and just build it to the sky. And as it got high, when the Lord looked down and saw what he was doing, God said this, oh, you gonna come this high in my kingdom without a relationship with me? I don't think so. I don't hear nobody saying nothing right there. I don't hear, you can't touch a neighbor and say, you can't build a ministry without a relationship with God. Nimrod provoked that. He said, we... We don't, need no, we don't need no relationship with God. We're just going to keep building. Watch this. And the Bible said, and God confused all the languages. Okay, y'all, y'all. It's getting ready to get heavy right now. And God confused the language. That's already heavy. That's already heavy to me right there. That's already heavy. And God confused the language. Sometimes you... You don't understand why people that you have been walking with, all of a sudden, y'all just start hitting a bump in the road and God confuses the language. Sometimes you don't understand why people leave your church because God confuses the language. Sometimes you don't understand why people that used to be your prayer partners, all of a sudden they turn on you because there's something in that perverted. So God confuses the language. I'm preaching hard. We, we just, I said, I'm preaching hard. I said, I'm preaching hard. You know why he confused the language? Because let me help you with something. That's why you got to bind the devil when the devil said, you ain't nothing. You can't make it. You so weak. You so dead. The reason why God has to allow confusion to hit it because in you, you have the power to be great. You have the power to build something great. But God said, I got to keep on pulling your spirit because if I don't watch you, you will build something great and I won't be a part of it. You may, and I'm going to tell you something. That's why I love this man. Because I'm going to tell you something. Ain't nothing worse than seeing a person that builds something great and got a great ministry and got everybody blowing you up about how you are and how powerful you are. But the real believers, they recognize you ain't anointed. You got a whole lot of stuff, but you ain't got enough power. I'm not hearing nobody. Y'all act like y'all scared to say amen. Maybe, 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 maybe I'm in the wrong place. I'm going to stand over here by pastor because cause, uh, that's the only, he'll say amen. Because he, well, it's just, because when the Nimrod spirit jump you, it becomes a good idea, but it ain't a God idea. Whoa, I don't hear nobody saying nothing. I don't hear nobody talking to me. And that's why the Holy Ghost said, let you get halfway through with it and can't finish it. He'll let you get your book almost finished and can't find nobody to publish it. I'm talking to somebody right now. He'll let you get all the paperwork to open up you a Dunkin' Donuts and the whole thing fall through. You don't hear what I'm saying? Because God said, you ain't got no with me. You, you don't talk to me in the morning, noon, and night. 
You haven't got before me to be pearls in the spirit. I'm not getting ready to let you prosper. It's getting ugly. This thing ain't no joke. Okay, watch this. When Nimrod, how much time I got? All right. When, when Nimrod took it up on himself, because watch, you know that legacy, Cush legacy, evil perversion transferred into him by his forefathers. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I ain't getting nobody to talk to me, but it's okay. Because I, I, I know this the word right here. Nimrod start trying to build a temple to God without God. God confused that. See, whenever God halts perversion in a person, What's perversion? Doing something the wrong way. Trying to take the wrong way and make it be right. And so when that didn't work, Nimrod jumped over the fence. His, his, his spiritual lineage began to increase because it had not conquered its greatest feet. So Nimrod married his mama. Okay. Nimrod married his mama, Semiramis. And they were known in paganism as Isis and Orsis. Now, you, now come on, come on. Just, just hold on. Tell your neighbor to hold on. When they got married, this introduced into paganism the spirit of worship of Baal. Because now, let me help you. Nothing can be worshipped unless there is a full manifestation of that spirit the reason why God had to step out on nothing and speak everything in existence and call water water and land land and fish fish and all of that because there had to be a manifestation of his Godhead of his Godness in order to get a people to say I worship God before Nimrod and his mama there was no manifestation for anybody to say I worship Baal when Nimrod married his mama it birthed out the spirit of perversion do I have somebody praying with me because I gotta tell you this I gotta tell you this cause this gonna, this gonna, this gonna open up a whole nother level in your mind about what we're doing now, watch this. He worshiped. It brought about the worship of Baal and Ashtoreth. I'm going to break it down. It was the worship. What is this? What is this, pastor? What is, what is the worship of Baal and Ashtoreth? This Baal spirit is a worship of self-will and self-want. I'm going to say that one more time. It is a spirit of self-will and self-want. So when you find people that are not doing the will of God, when they come to church, they are not worshiping God. They have been seduced by the spirit of Baal and they are in idol worship. Okay. You know, this, 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 I just want to just tell you, this ain't, this ain't cookies and cornflakes. This, this is that meat stuff. I can't, I can't come down. Listen, 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 listen. For the last 20 years, you all have seduced us to keep preaching step by step come on live right come on get it right come on and we have not been able to go on to the mysteries of the revelation of the word because we can't keep you saved a week but then God began to talk to me as a prophet he said but what are you going to do about the people who are living right what are you going to do about the people who are ready for the next level 
call. What are you going to do about the people who do walk in consecration? You got to begin to preach a word for the mature Christian. There's some folk in here that's walking up right. Where you at? There's some folk that's done sold out to God. Where you at? There's some people that's ready for the revelation of the word. Where you at? And I'm here to prophesy you can no longer be held hostage in the pew because... Okay. Okay, I just... Whew. I feel something here tonight. I feel something here tonight. Because you know what? You know what? Can I, let me tell you something. A lot of what I'm preaching, a lot of y'all in here, you may not know all the right terms, but you know what I'm confirming to you tonight? You ain't crazy. You ain't crazy. Uh-huh. You ain't crazy. Uh-huh. You felt it, and God was trying to show it to you, but you didn't know. You thought, if I shared this with somebody, they'll think I'm crazy. You ain't crazy. People, people, people. People in the church speaking in tongues. You ain't crazy when you sit next to somebody that ha -da 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 -da, and in your spirit you said there ain't no real tongue. Something, something about that. Y'all gonna make me, y'all gonna make me just go off in here tonight. I don't know where y'all go to church at. But see, you know what? And it's a shame because you see some of those same people up in leadership position and they hallelujah. And you say, uh-uh, I don't know what it is, but something ain't right about her. I sense it. I see it. I know it. I may not have a license. I may not be a preacher. I may not. Oh, y'all. I may not be an evangelist, but I am an intercessor and I'm clean and I'm righteous. And because of that, my reveals all things to me he shows me I just wish I can get a church to shout right there cuz oh I see I see I see I see I see cuz I just said I just want to get the church I just wish I can get a church to shout I ain't got I ain't got but a few people so see I know who I'm preaching to for the rest of the night because I'm telling you, it's a, listen, listen, you ought to be so full in your spirit right now. You ought to be to the point that you've been waiting for, for the call of the prophet to come. That you ought to be overwhelmed in praise. How can you sit there with your legs crossed? You know why? Because that demon in you know that I'm about to hit something with your name on it. Oh. Y'all sit down because y'all know I ain't scared. Y'all sit down because I ain't scared. Woo! Shabba baba na 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 Woo! My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Woo! Murphy? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I gotta break this down. I'm gonna I'm I'm leave my notes for a minute. I'm gonna break it down to you. Down here real quick. Baal was a male spirit. Let's get this. Because it's all gonna tie in together in a minute. It's gonna mean something to you. Asherah was a statue of the, they call it the female counterpart of Baal. Asherah was a statue that was formed after the spirit Ashtaroth. Let me tell you the difference. What is the difference between Baal? Baal is a spirit. You don't think I went through warfare for this one? Yes, I did. Because the devil don't want you to know this. He wants to keep on shouting, hey, and not know him. It's time to know him. Baal, Baal is a territorial spirit. Baal, okay, I'll give you a perfect example. You go to San Francisco, they say San Francisco, the city just reeking with homosexuality. Baal is the spirit that goes into regions and whatever is the dominating sin, that's what the city is known for. What is the dominating spirit in a church that is fire? 
bow before God. That's what the church is known for. Like you got some churches that say, honey, ain't nothing but a lot of sisters over there. Baal is in operation because Baal names the territory. He says, this atmosphere right here, this atmosphere belongs to homosexuality. This atmosphere right here. You know, you got some churches you go to and they say, honey, I got to go because all they do is gossip over here. Baal says, the gossiping spirit rules over here. Now watch this. Now watch this. Now watch this. Watch this. So, so, the spirit of Asherah, watch this. It is the human manifestation spirit. So when Asherah comes on the scene, that is a spirit that can change itself to be male or female. It originally was male, but now it has the ability to transform itself into male and female. So whenever the devil wants to birth something out in a church, he puts Baal with Asherah. Asherah turns to a female spirit and they give birth to a demon that's been trying to lurk in the church because of the weakness of the people. Okay, I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. You ain't got to say amen because I'm preaching. Well then, prophetess, what does all of this mean? What does all of this mean? How does this, how does, how does this relate to us? Asherah, the Bible said, the reason why Ahab did more evil before the Lord than anybody is because, not because he married Jezebel. Because Jezebel's father was a high priest in the Balaam's she was raised in idol worship she was raised in Baal she didn't she wasn't nobody that just got evil and so because Ahab's lineage evil, and every forefather that came before him did evil in the eyesight of God and they all kept erecting this same statue now what does Asherah means it means I'm going to erect see the Bible said and we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water did it not say that well, the statue Esherah is a tree. And what, what Ahab would do, he builds a temple to Baal. And he plants these trees in the temple. Now, y'all ain't seeing this. That spirit comes to denounce the fact that we're supposed to be the tree that's planted. He done planted another tree. Y'all better come out and talk to me in here tonight. Y'all... I said, y'all better talk to me tonight. You better talk to me tonight. He plants another tree. And the tree is fire. And the Bible says he plants that tree next to Baal. So that in the spirit realm, they keep on producing. Now, okay. Okay, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Because Ashtaroth is a chameleon spirit. Her symbol is the dove. That still don't make no sense to you. I'm, I'm preaching hard. Do I have some help? Is y'all praying for me? Is y'all praying for me? Her symbol is the dove. What does that mean? When John was baptizing Jesus, the Holy Spirit descended down upon him in the spirit of a dove. So this spirit knows that if I'm going to deceive the believer then I've got to cause their spirits to be perverted i got to let them walk in rebellion and disobedience and then give them the spirit of the dove so can't nobody see it make them act like they say give them a sweet spirit let them speak as a matter of fact when they grab the mic even anoint them let them be because this spirit knows how to imitate the power of God but it cannot imitate purification Wait a minute. I heard the Holy Ghost said, make the people praise God right there. Because you know what? We're digging up something. He said, everybody in here, just start praising God. Because we're digging up something. No, no. Oh, no, no, Shata. Oh, the Asika, no, Shanda. Yeah, no, 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 see ya. Okay, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. I'm going to show you something. Oh, Jesus. You see, what it is is the evil, the evil, 
the evil have gone from, from the evil of the devil. Whew. From the regular devil. Into, how do I know the end time is coming? Because the evil now, see if somebody came in right now and hand you a big old uh, pipe with some crack in it, you would say no. Somebody walk in here and said, here, I want you to take this Johnny Walker, this Jack Daniel, I want you to drink it down. I want you to become an alcoholic. You said no. Somebody walk up to you and say, here, I want to give you a pack of cigarettes. I want you to smoke to your heart's content. You will say no. And so what happens is, because the righteous, oh, <laughs> Shanda, are now beginning to live their lives in the spirit, this demon has got to camouflage himself because he's got to get in the spirit where the believer is. I wish I had some help right now. I just wish I had some help right now. That's why you got spiritual warfare. That's oh, all. Don't you be deceived when somebody can get up and preach and then you see something else about their character that's not like God. Let me tell you something. God is snatching the cover. He's taking, he's taking the shield off of your eyes. He's going to let you recognize what a real demon is. I don't care if they're speaking in tongues. said demons speak in tongues and they tremble but they don't know righteousness Woo! I don't have nobody to go there with me right there it is my righteousness that determines whether or not the spirit that I say I have is real okay sit down sit down sit down sit down sit down you know I'm gonna tell you a little story Right quick, and I'm gonna I'm move on to, cause, 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 cause we getting to Jezebel. We going, we going, we getting there. We getting there. See, see, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. So, so deep. Jezebel and Ahab got married. Ashtaroth married Baal, a descendant of Baal worship. They established the kingdom in Samaria. Do you remember when Jesus who, who, spoke and said, I need, I must go through Samaria. And when he got there, he met the woman. And so they started talking about the water at the well. And Jesus started prophesying to her. And she was able to go and say, I met a man. And then she told Jesus, she said, okay, this ain't about the water. So let's get to the real thing. Where are we going to worship at? And Jesus said, he said, they that worship in the Lord must worship him in spirit and truth. Jesus didn't go through Samaria for a woman. He went there so he can connect with the woman to counterattack the same spirit in, Je in Samaria like Ahab and Jezebel so he can restore the power of worship back to Samaria. You better come out here and understand. It was about bringing down Jezebel. It was about bringing down idol worship. It was about Jesus saying that, look, I know that Jezebel has been cast down, but I got to make sure that that spirit never surfaced again to worship because now I'm taking worship out of a place and worship in a spirit. Okay, okay I can't get nobody to go with me. Can't get nobody to go with me right there. Woo. Woo. So see how you break the spirit of Jezebel. How you break how you break the spirit of Jezebel. They needed a temple. How you break the spirit of Jezebel? I don't wait till I get to church to worship. Because you know what? Jesus broke that in Samaria. All I gotta do is get in the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Oh y'all, see some of y'all ain't gonna be able to handle that because I'm not talking to the religious people now. I'm talking to the believer. I'm talking to the righteous. And if I get in the spirit, demon spirits gotta come down. If I get in the spirit, no weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper. If I get in the spirit. Okay, okay sit down because I want to finish this. Let's finish this. I want to finish it. Can I finish it? 
Can I finish this? Okay, sit down so I can see the hands because I want to know who with me. I want to know who with me because I got to tell you something. Got to tell you something. Got to tell you something. So I was, I was, uh, Pastor, one, there's, a, there's a girl that worked for my ministry. And um, she bought these parrots named Nina and, and Zazu. Nina and Zazu. So she came to work for my ministry. How the Lord found her was through the message No More Sheets. So she started playing No More Sheets in the house. Playing it, 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 playing it. Yazu and Nina, Tanya can tell you that I'm not even exaggerating by the least bit. Them birds, when she turned on one of my she didn't even got turned on loud. They automatically start hollering, say yes! They speak in tongue just like me. You know when I do that, God's gonna do it in this place. Say, one of the birds, Nina, can, she sounds exactly like me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's a parrot. So you know what the Holy Ghost said to me? Honey, it don't take much for you to speak in tongue. A bird can do what I do. But that bird, that bird, that bird can't cast a demon out. That, that bird can't live right. That bird can't walk in righteousness. That, that bird cannot decree that Jesus Christ is alive. my whole message she taped it for me she said I'm giving it to you for, for a present that parent can preach several tapes the end word for word and she said if I go to work prophetess and I leave the tape on when I get home it takes me almost an hour to calm them down because for an hour they speak it in tongues they holler and say yes and when the one said say yes the other one said the other one said The one bird, they tell me that the one bird say, God's going to move in this place. And the other bird start going, hey! Come on here, church. Come on here, church. Come on here, church. The devil got a demon that can do anything you can do. The devil got a demon that can build a church. The devil got a demon that can build a praise team. The devil, y'all ain't hear me preach. Y'all about to make me hurt myself. The devil got a demon that can preach better than me. As a matter of fact, the devil got a demon that can preach better than me. What are you talking about? But it's about righteousness. It's about the way you walk. It's about the way you talk. It's about your lifestyle outside of these four walls. Yo, 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 sit down because I done got real excited. And I said I wanted to finish. Am I doing all right, Pastor? Am I doing all right? Because if we got some, I, I, I call them this in my ministry. We got some sneaky Stevies in here. I made up that. I call them sneaky Stevies when you send somebody to do something and they start spinning around the floor like they're doing it. A few minutes later, you come and it still ain't done. They, and then all of a sudden, they, they, they didn't stuck out somewhere. And you don't know where they come back. All the work is done. And you say, where was you at? Oh, I had to, I had to run over. That's a sneaky Stevie spirit. That means you ain't never intended to help nobody. You just wanted to pretend like you're going to help. And God is cleaning the church out from all the sneaky Stevens that's around the church pretending like you want to help. If you want to help us get saved, if you want to help us, y'all don't hear me, because the Bible tells me that righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to any people. If you want to see, if you want to help us, then get your life right with God. So when we start praising and binding and loosing, the devil know he don't have a foothold in our church. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, let me just say this to you. So, see, I know some of y'all can't holler real loud because, okay, I'm just. 
I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that alone because when the Bible says, when my when the when the International Bible Encyclopedia says that, watch this, that, that Jezebel is a descendant from the Ashtaroth spirit, male, female, the origination of the spirit is a male. So though that spirit operates like a like a female, the encyclopedia said, but it does not, it does not forget its original state. And that's why a Jezebel spirit, if it is a woman, can stand toe to toe with a man and ain't scared. That's why she can dominate. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. That's why when you see a male in the body of Christ with a Jezebel spirit, it is a, it is a spirit of Balaam. He has the ability to erect, watch this, an Asherah. He came almost like, like, a, like a stone brick standing in the way. Now I'm gonna break something down that's getting ready to, okay, y'all, 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 y'all. How do you know, how do you know when, 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 when people in the church, how do you know when, 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 when people, when, when we, 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 did you hear me say we? Sister, did you hear me say we? Point to me and say, prophetess, how do you know when the spirit of Jezebel done jumped you? Cause see, ain't nobody exempt. That's why I had her tell me, why, why do you know? Oh, damn mercy, Jesus. Because the Bible said that when, that when the worship of Ashtaroth is in process, which is the Jezebel spirit, it said that in the temple, they, they, they carved out images, images of Ashtaroth and Baal, and they were created with enlarged and projectile body parts. Like they would carve these images out and they would give the images oversized breasts and oversized uh, 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 penises and, and just exaggerate it because it was to provoke them. It was to provoke them to desire that thing instead of God. You don't hear me. And the way they transferred spirits from one to another, they had orgies. Okay, I'm going to help somebody in here tonight. I told you, I'm, this, is, this, is, this, ain't, this ain't no kindergarten stuff because some of y'all looking at me like, oh, Jesus, oh, Lord. So then, so then how do you know when, when someone in the body of Christ is under that spirit? Because whatever you give them to do, they try to overdo it. When, 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 when they're seen, it's got to be, you got to call my name. Everything I do, it's got to be big and everybody got to know it. And, 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 and you don't call my name, I'm mad. Everything. They try to outdo everybody. They're not a team player. They want all the credit. They'll let you do the work and they'll steal the credit. And when the job is over, they'll go around bragging, telling everybody, honey, they, they, they don't know, but I'm the one. If it wasn't for me, that wouldn't have never happened. If it wasn't for me, I'm the one that got the connection. I'm the one that did it. I'm the one. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me in here. Cause see, cause see, I knew I, I, I was I was waiting for them to get their hallelujah over. Cause I know this last little bit we ain't gonna have a whole lot of people shout. Cause y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't because see, when that spirit is not on you, then you don't care if they don't call your name. You don't care if you don't get the credit. You just rejoice because it happened. You just praise God because the church got the victory. You don't want to be the star. But when you... Oh. Y'all tired of me? Are y'all tired? Because I got to tell you this. 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 Now, 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 now. Now, somebody said to me, somebody said this to me, somebody said to this to me, I ain't got but two days to get this right now. Somebody said to me, well, 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 how is it? Well, why is it? Ain't nobody gonna tell me nothing, cause honey, I know, I, I could look right at people, and they said, well, honey, the, the word she prophesied to me was on. Honey, that's a prophetess, and you looking at people on, that's a demon. Oh, well, her word was on. Well, see, well, see, Baal was of the sun goddess, and Ashtaroth was a moon goddess. A sun goddess and a moon goddess determines information from the second heaven, which is the astrology world. So that demon can give you 
right information. He can't give you destiny. And how he promotes you to stay a demon, he prophesies to you what you think you already write in. And that becomes your confirmation. And then that strengthens that demon on you. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Lord, I don't hear nobody say, why don't I hear nobody saying amen right there? You don't get excited because somebody can prophesy to you because they're consulting with the stars. But unless they prophesy and interject in that prophecy, your lifestyle. Because a true prophet will say, baby, he'll give you a house. God going to bless you, but honey, you got to clean up. Now that's a fabulous prophecy. Y'all, ain't... <laughs> Yo, I'm not getting nobody. Baby, I see great things. God take you to the nation, but he going to kill you first, honey. He going to birth you out. He going to dig your gut out because there's a whole lot of junk down in you that ain't right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know you own a true prophet when they're able to dig your spirit out and then throw you to your destiny. If they... Okay. Okay. Y'all, 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 let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Lord Jesus. Okay, I'm, 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 I just. See, you, 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 when you, when you, when you operating, when you get under God, the Bible said that Asa, Asa, a descendant of real born. Mama's name was Micaiah. And Mika Asa was trying to resurrect the stuff because real born had jacked it all up. And Asa was a descendant of David, so they were trying to get it right. The Bible said his mama erected an Asherah in the temple. And it says, and he dethroned his mama from being the queen mother. Okay, what am I trying to say? This demon jumps in all ages. It ain't no... It, it. What am I trying to say? From age to age to age, all the way to Ahab, he would not do the will of God. And when you do not do the will of God, you open yourself up to the Baal spirit. Now watch this. And when you open yourself up to the Baal spirit by rebelling against God, then you are immediately introduced to Jezebel. Okay, uh, y'all, just I just want one person to say you helping me. I, I'm, 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 I'm really understanding. Okay, let me help you with something. Jezebel didn't take over nothing. Jezebel took over. She didn't take over. Jezebel walked in relinquished authority. Jezebel walked in the place that Ahab gave up. Okay, I'm going to help you right now. So that means Jezebel is not the sister in our church with the high heels and the short skirt that's after the pastor. Jezebel is anybody who God done told to pray and you haven't started your prayer ministry yet. Okay, I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right now. I'm not hearing nobody say because if you can't say amen, say ouch. Because if you're in this place tonight and God has given you an assignment and you have not yielded to that assignment, hello, Jezebel. Because if I tell you what you're doing now, let me tell you what you're doing now. Can I, let me tell you what you're doing now. When you say, okay, if God says preach and you say no, Then the spirit of the Baal is obligated to give you a new assignment. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. That's why you got people in the body of Christ doing stuff that God ain't never called you to do. You in the choir. God said be an intercessor. You still singing. You don't hear me. What does that mean? You in somebody else's job. You done did just like Jezebel. You done, uh, you done signed your name. Put your seal on there. God didn't tell you to sing. He told you to pray. 
way. And as long as you are out of order, you are under the spirit of Jezebel. It's quiet in here now. It's quiet in here now. Because you know, you know why we so chaotic right now? You know why the church across the nation is so chaotic right now? Because, because this is powerful. This is powerful. Pastors, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're a pastor in this church. Raise your hand. If you, if you, I don't care if you've been, why y'all acting scared like y'all want to raise your hand now? So raise your hand, everybody going. Now, some people said I was a pastor 20 minutes ago. Okay, I'm finna love on you. I ain't gonna cut you. I ain't got a knife. Okay, let me try it one more time. All the pastors, raise your hand. Let me see you. Let me see your hand. I ain't gonna cut you. I promise you. I promise you. I ain't got no knife. I'm finna, I'm finna give you some vital information. I'm gonna give you some vital information. See, you will know when the spirit of Je Je Jezebel has entered. And guess what? See, that spirit, that spirit starts at the back. That spirit weaves its way. And what it does, it sits back and it, you, you don't believe this, it can pick up the desire of the man of God. That spirit can feel your passion. So when you get up and you say, I just want God to be glorified. I just want us to... To, to have some stuff that God wants us to have. Da, da, da. And so what that spirit does is it checks out everybody in the church who are not in the right place. And it comes to the man of God and say, oh, you need a worship leader? I'll do it. Oh, you need a soup kitchen? I got some connections over here. My friends know some people at the government. I can get you $50,000 tomorrow. Pastor, because God sent me to you, and I'm telling you, I'm with you for life, because I know you my spiritual father. I'm going to get that soup kitchen for you. Watch this. Watch this. So, Jezebel, get the soup kitchen for you. And then, watch this. Then Jezebel calls the church one day, and, and, and don't nobody answer. I called the church full time and nobody asked, where's the secretary? See, that's what I'm talking about. People all around you, they need to get on their job because the job of a spirit of Jezebel is to discredit everybody that you got trust in so that that person can look like they're the ones for your life. I'm not getting nobody to talk back to me and I really wish I had a church in here tonight that would just say amen or something. People that have served you for years and they may not be perfect. But you know you can count on their spirits loving God. Yeah, they going through a transition where they out of the will of God. But Jezebel will come and paint. Her spirit is exaggeration. Exaggerated body parts. So she exaggerates everything. She makes you think that nobody's with you. And, and everybody is talking about you. And, and don't nobody really love you and see your vision but me, pastor. And that spirit can jump on a male or a female. Why am I preaching hard in here tonight? Because I'm preaching tonight. You don't have to say amen to this Because I know I got a message My Holy Ghost is saying amen to me And so when you look up You got a one man band You got Jezebel And if she ain't over the choir She running stuff with the choir He running stuff He running the parking attendant Everybody And now all of a sudden Can't nobody get the pastor Unless they ask you Okay, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me in here because, because something is, something is, something is, is, is something wrong. Is my mic on? Because, is my mic on? Because all of a sudden the amen's are going. And I know some of y'all can't say amen because you're guilty, but it's all right. I'm here to help you. A Jezebel spirit will sit in church and you're out of the will of God, but you got something to say about everybody. You don't like the praise team. You don't like their outfits and, and why they wearing that. And, and why pastor got the stage like that. And this don't look like a church. And, and this don't look like a sanctuary. And why do they march like that? And why they got the lights like that? Jezebel spirit will complain about everything until you put her in charge. And once she gets in charge, all of a sudden, it's a beautiful church. It's a wonderful church. It's a powerful ministry.
Okay, let me come back here because y'all looking to look quiet to be back here. Everybody, now I'm going to have to take a walk now because y'all done got too quiet on me. you know what and then the next thing you know when she has subliminally and listen it's not always sexual she seduces in the mind she seduces in the spirit she seduces by the way she helps and when that seduction takes place then that spirit will start telling you pastor you know what we need we need a children's church that's bigger than anybody's in the nation God ain't told you that so Jezebel start bringing you ideas about stuff that God ain't never told you to do and then you start taxing the members to build Jezebel a children's church when God ain't never told you that your ministry was a children's church he told you You know, some keep happening in this building. Because when I come down here, the power down here, when I, when I go back there, the power back there, but it won't balance out. Because see, see, when that spirit, when that spirit gets your ear of influence, then it starts telling you, you know what you ought to do with your ministry, Murphy? You ought to, you ought to take your records and you ought to just go out on a park somewhere and you ought to get out there and it'll start introducing stuff to you that sounds so big. And guess what? That spirit has all the connections to make the first assignment go over big so you can trust them with everything else. You don't hear what I'm talking to you. That spirit can bring you more money than has ever brought you because a part of seduction is to over exaggerate stuff that's why ministries that only preach about money and blessings that scares me because the spirit of Jezebel will keep you going at the stuff I don't hear nobody talking to me Ahab's kingdom came down because of stuff Ahab came from a crooked lineage, a crooked background. He don't know how to get nothing straight. What am I saying to you? When that spirit picks up that there's a part of you, that don't want to wait on God. Woo, hallelujah. When that spirit picks you that there's a part of you that don't want to walk in the patience and the making of your ministry and the making of the thing that God has for you when that spirit sense that you don't want to wait on God then that spirit picks up that you don't want it God's way you want another way and it will get you whatever you want the wrong way that's why you don't hear what I'm saying Lord have mercy that's why Jezebel looked at Ahab and said you want that land you want neighbor's land I get it for you. God didn't intend for him to have it. She said, you want it? I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you. Because what am I saying? When your spirit stop desiring God's way, there's another demon that'll give you another way. But the Bible said that the end of that way is destruction. Who am I preaching to besides myself in here tonight? Touch your neighbor and say, you better wait on God. You better be still and wait on God told you to jump in one place I'm gonna jump till he tell me to move I'm not going nowhere if God tell you to paint the church he ain't called me to preach I'm gonna paint the church until God tell me something else I'm not gonna let no Jezebel spirit come and prophesy something to me that God does not intend for me to be I'm gonna wait on Am I helping anybody? Oh, I'm just preaching hard. Now, which is it? Am I helping anybody? Am I just preaching hard? I'm just. Lord, have mercy. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. See, see, see. That, that spirit. Okay, now this is so deep. 
See, God got to maneuver stuff. And in and, 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 and the spirit of the Lord, like a chess game, he got, he got to shift and move people and move stuff and move situations. It's like he's shifting. Because he's making a way. Now, if you've ever seen a chess game, you got to, you got to, it, it, it ain't like checkers. Because see, checkers, you get there and you jump. You jump and you take it. Folk ain't walking stuff out no more. They just playing checkers. Oh, I see a good opportunity. It don't matter that I just to so-and-so who been working in this position for nine years before I got here. It doesn't matter that I didn't come to her and say, I would like to work with you because I had skills at my old church, but I don't want to override nothing that y'all doing. So I want to submit myself. That spirit want to jump and take. Where y'all at? Where's the church? But see, when you, when you commission yourself to do it God's way, then you got to play chess. You can't, you can't jump and take. You got to be shifted to the left. And then you got to wait a long time. Because chess, chess ain't no fast game. Because if you move too fast, you'll mess the whole thing up. Whoa, who am I preaching to? I'm preaching to somebody. I just felt the anointing hit me in my belly so hard when I said that. I'm going to say it again. If you move too fast. You'll mess the whole thing up and you'll have to start all over again. <laughs> Sit down, let me tell you. That's powerful, ain't it? So you gotta come here, brother. You gotta you gotta wait when it's time to, when it's time to move. And this is the thing that, that, that gets me. Because you start with the man and you you're moving. But the little men, the less powerful. If you as powerful as you say you are, then you wait for the right opportunity when you see that this man ain't got no other alternative, but he has to leave the board in order for you to get to the other side. So you don't jump over him, you just slide him off the board. Now watch this, now he ain't being hurt because if he look around the board himself, he ain't got no place to go. So, so in the spirit, God's got to move people. And he'd make a move and move some out your way. And he put you in a closer step. And he said, now wait right here. Because before a man build a house, he got to count up the cost. Now look across the board. Take a survey of where you're trying to go. Ask yourself before you move, is this going to cost me something? You don't hear what God is saying. Ask yourself before you move, am I going to lose my kingship in the kingdom? Ask yourself before you move, am I going to be bumped out of the game if I move? And then if I am, it ain't worth me moving. I'm going to stay right here. I'll get over here and move something else. How do I move something else? I start a prayer ministry and I start praying until God give me the power to move in my kingship again. And if God don't give me the power, I stay over here. I don't hear nobody talking to me tonight. I, I kind of feel like I'm preaching by myself. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Do you hear what God is saying? It's going to take time for God to get your way. This ain't no overnight thing. This ain't no miracle. It's a making in the spirit. It's a birthing in the spirit. He's trying to birth you out. He's trying to raise you right. He ain't trying to make you jump over stuff. Because anything you jump over two years up the road, you're going to have to come back and correct that thing. God trying to move you in the spirit. I'm through. I'm through. Because y'all up there look at them like I'm at a movie. I'm through. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You know, this is the kind of preaching people don't like to hear. Because you know why? This is that weight on him preaching. And we live in that generation. I'm going to give it to you now. <laughs> Shut up, y'all. 
Now there's a whole lot of stuff you ain't getting ready to get right now. Okay, y'all ain't here. I ain't hear nobody say nothing to me. I ain't hear nobody say nothing to me. And especially when it comes down to the will of God. Well, listen, listen, anybody in this building? Okay, you want to build a Burger King? All right. You want to build a pizza joint? All right. Fine then. You want to do the will of God? Then let me tell you something. You don't get the will of God by yourself. That's a passed down mantle. That's an impartation from another realm. Just like Ahab was a lineage of evil, you got to have a lineage of righteousness. Because you know what? You can't get down the road and all of a sudden, oops, I fell off the wagon. Yeah, I prayed for me, prophets by him. I've been in ministry for 10 years when I had an affair with the deacon. God ain't got time for stuff like that. That's why he got to let you take your time until he purify you. And when God, listen, when the Holy Ghost sent that your spirit is getting in a hurry and it don't want to wait on him if you tell God no then you are asking for the spirit of perversion to show you another way okay, I'm finish. Finish. I'm going to cross something, but I want to. I'm preaching hard. But I ran across something that I had to, I had to read. Lord, have mercy. Thank This ain't no play church right here, y'all. I'm trying to tell you. When people in the ministry are under the influence of a Jezebel spirit, they will never serve low. If they can't serve high, they won't serve. Why y'all ain't saying amen? Okay, let me help you out with something. If you're here tonight and this message doesn't really hit you and you really don't plan to change, just say amen anyway. Don't just sit there and just be busted out. Just don't sit there and just with this look. The spirit of Jezebel will only serve what it can completely take over. This is gonna this is gonna help somebody right here when I read this. Y'all gotta hear this. Because I'm going to my next level tomorrow night. I just have to. Spirit of Jezebel is a lion spirit. That spirit lied to you. That's why some of y'all think y'all more than what you is. Speak to people, how you doing? God bless you, praise the Lord. How you doing, devil? You ain't nobody. You don't even speak to people. And then you gonna get up here and preach. It ain't all that. God bless you. How you doing, says what? Bless the Lord and highly favor. We didn't ask you all that. Just say hi. because when you really ain't nothing that's when you act like you something people that really is something half of the times you don't even know they in the crowd okay I ain't saying nothing y'all I ain't getting no amens right there you got some people that sitting out here in these pews that can pray you under the bench you don't hear what I'm saying to you I ain't got 
got nothing. And then, hallelujah, pray. God bless. I, I, they, they walk in the door. Do you have a seat in the front? I'm, I'm evangelist watermelon from across the You don't know me, but I'm, I'm, I'm pastoring. And the Lord has called me in the area. And I'm in the area. And do you have a front row seat? You got that much power. You go and sit anywhere. Sit anywhere. Because you didn't come here to be an evangelist. You came to eat. And if God drew you here, there's some stuff in you that God want to birth out of you. No, no, no. You're in the wrong temple to be important. This ain't your church. God, when God drew your spirit in here, he said, I want to show you something. I want to talk to you. Humble yourself. Paul says, I know how to be a base. And I know how to bow. Y'all better talk to me because some of y'all looking at me all cross out. Don't be looking at me like that because I'll walk up on you. I'll call you right out and say, I'm talking to you. That demon, you got hit you, didn't I? Stop all that important stuff. Get that spirit off of you. Because the more God do in you, he take you down. The way up is down. The greater God birth you out, you can tell when God is doing something in you. Because you know what? You don't want to be seen. All you want to do is get somewhere and hide yourself in God. And the reason why you want to hide, because when you really get in the presence of the Lord, you recognize your undoneness. And as much as God is doing in you, you still tell yourself, you still nasty. You still ain't clean up. You still ain't birthed out. You still ain't where you need to be. And I don't want nobody to glorify my flesh. I want God to do something in me. Because let me tell you something. That's how you get looked over in the spirit. The church looking all important because when the spirit of the Lord start moving it moves and it gravitates to people whose spirit is reeking God I got a need he'll pass you over you sitting up here looking all like I got it and honey this is good information and it ain't for me and praise the Lord pray bring your pride for self down all oh, that arrogance that ain't God that ain't the Holy Ghost that's Jezebel trying to be seen. That's Jezebel don't want to die. That's your flesh that don't want to wait on God. That's you that's done got some off prophecy from a Jezebel spirit. And now you think you're going somewhere. <laughs> Jezebel is a liar, backstabber. And a usurper, she answers with evasion, deftly switching the truth and the facts. Jezebel talk gray. If you ask her one thing, uh, uh, perfect example. I'm gonna give you a perfect example right now, baby. This, this, this is that spirit right here. You know Prophetess Bonham? Yes. Mm. Yeah, I know. Mm. Yeah, I know, girl. Well, what you think, well, I, you know, she all right. And this is the other person. Well, I think she blessed. I think God will you. Yeah, me too. See that? That's a... That spirit doesn't learn how to answer in the gray area. So if you catch it in a lie, it can say, that ain't what I meant. And if you catch it over here on the side of the truth, that ain't what I meant either. That spirit know how to switch. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Saints, am I, am I, am I in the building tonight? Okay, y'all, y'all know I'm, 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 can I have two minutes? It's going to take me two minutes. It says, she does not repent even with the truth right in her face. She always has an excuse for her behavior. No matter how outrageous it may be, Jezebel targets worship leaders, pastors, elders, other people in authority, and their spouses. Jezebel prefers refined qualities. That's a high demon. She loved the best, Gucci. That demon gonna dress sharp for you, Versace suits and lizard skin suits and Versace ties and y'all, y'all, it. Cause it's a deceiver. That spirit got to make you think it's so prosperous that it can take you somewhere or it's above you. It may be rich on the outside, but I'm telling you, it's bankrupt in its spirit. I'd rather have a raggedy dress and got the power of God in me and a prayer life. You don't hear me. If I'm a pastor of a church, I'd rather have five people that know how to touch God. I have 50,000 demons.
demons that's perpetrating and pretending. I'm helping my brother right here. I'm helping him. He ain't got to say, man, I'm going to move over from him because I don't even want nobody to think I don't talk to him because I ain't talked to him. He ain't talked to me. Talk to me. She hates civility, repentance, and true holiness. She calls this pastor to become controlled and unyielded. She is not accountable to others. Jezebel can work through men who are flirtatious with women and vice versa. She also gives prophetic words, dreams, and visions. She talks about them constantly and doesn't measure them against the sure word of prophecy. A Jezebel spirit always just bragging, her. oh honey, I prophesied that to him. Oh, you know, brother, so-and-so got a car. Honey, I prophesied that to him two weeks ago he was going to get there. Oh, you know, sister, so-and-so had a baby girl. Honey, I told her that in the bathroom. I, I prophesied. Shut your mouth. I said that kind of strong, didn't I? Because I'm a mother in Zion and I recognize that. Shut your mouth. You ain't got to brag about your gift. Because when it's from God, you'll do it in secret and shut your mouth. Ain't nobody got to know you were the one that prophesied it. What business is it? What, what does that gain? This is going to be good right here. This don't make you nothing but right. So what you was right. You still a demon. You still ain't clean. You still braggadocious. And see, all that is because you want her to go and tell somebody, honey, prophesy, oh, she prophesied that to me. And honey, ooh, honey, that woman got, child, she can see. Then you go tell somebody, honey, so-and-so prophesied to me. And then she, ooh, honey, she gave me a word. And you got the whole church scabbing for a word. Well, I'm going to just get on my, honey, I, how you doing? I just heard, honey, God is on you. What the Lord is saying for me? See, them is people that don't want the right way. Because if you want the right way, you ain't got to go ask nobody what they're going to do. Look, God ain't going to look over you and tell somebody something about you. He'll tell you. Because when somebody come and prophesy something to you, they ought to be confirming what God said. The prophecy comes to confirm. You ain't got no surprises in the kingdom. If you being surprised, it's because you way off track. You way out of God's will. That's why folk come. Honey, the Lord told me to tell you. Honey, he going to let you raise up a children's home. And I just say, I don't receive that. See, some of y'all ain't bold as I just look at people and say, that, I, that don't register. God bless you if the Lord told you that, but I don't receive it. And that's what the body of Christ got to stop, busting out some of these demons. But the Lord told me, I see you. No, I don't receive that. I don't receive I see you with a... With, is your brother... I ain't got no brother. I see your sister. I ain't got no sister. But well, the Lord said he's going to bring off crack. She died last year. A drug addict. Wrong again. Okay, y'all don't want me to talk. <laughs> What's wrong, y'all? Why everybody quiet? Why everybody? Because you know what? The more praise you get that demon, the more you're going to make it live in the church. That's why you got to bust it out. You wrong, 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 wrong. And I don't care because you're not the boss of me. <laughs> what the kids say now. You're not the boss of me. I'm, you're not the boss of me. I ain't got to be scared of you. And you come to me again, I'm going to pastor. Come. Okay, another wrong word, pastor. Because the Bible says that when you got one that is unruly and will not you submit and try to usurp the authority in the church, the Bible says to mark him and have nothing to do with him. The Amplified Bible says don't even speak to him. Come on here. I ain't got to talk to you. You're a demon. God bless you. How you doing? <laughs> Prophetess Bottom didn't even speak. I sure didn't because you are your serpent of authority. You trying to start confusion in our church. You a liar. You a false prophet. And the word says to disconnect myself from you. The Bible said that the man of God ought to stand you up and mark you and dismiss you from the fellowship. Oh, you put somebody at the church. The Bible said put them out. Oh. <laughs>